Geographic Information System is a type of database containing geographic data combined with software tools for managing, analyzing, and visualizing those data. Given the advancing technology we have today, the system has many applications and is used not just in different industries but also in our daily lives. Today, I will be discussing one published research journal from the Philippines which shows the application of GIS in a specific field or area. Allow me to present to you the research journal on groundwater vulnerability assessment using modified hydrological drastic model in Mekawayan City, Bulacan, Philippines. The study was published in November 2020, authored by Sir Francis Junti Makalam, Ma'am Marisa J. Sobremisana, Ma'am Patricia Ann J. Sanchez, and Ma'am Simplicia A. Pasicolan. The study focuses on groundwater, which accounts for 89% of fresh water on Earth, making it one of the most important natural resources as it is where we get the water we drink and use in irrigations from. However, it is very prone to contamination, both nature and human-induced. This happens when presence of hard rock aquifers have low storage and yields, leading to greater pollutant vulnerability through crack and fracture flows or when products like chemicals, fertilizers, gasoline, and oil seep into groundwater, resulting in poor drinking water quality, water loss, potential health issues, and more. May Kawayan is part of the Marilao, May Kawayan, and Obando River System, or MORS, found in the province of Bulacan, which is known to be a home to hundreds of thousands of people and quite a number of industries such as gold smelting and recycling of lead-acid batteries. As the mentioned city is said to be one of the key urban centers in the country experiencing water stress due to increasing demand, it is no question then that in 2009, a study from the Institute of Philippine of Ateneo de Manila University found that the city's groundwater supply is getting depleted. In response to this concern, the researchers used vulnerability assessment to assess the susceptibility of water table, aquifer, and water well to contaminants that may reduce groundwater quality. By using the vulnerability assessment tool, areas that are most prone to pollutions and contaminations will be identified and will be subject to careful land use planning, intensive monitoring, and pollution prevention. So the main objective of the study is to show areas of the highest potential for groundwater pollution based on hydrogeological conditions and human impacts. Particularly, the researchers aim to develop a groundwater vulnerability index in the area and a groundwater vulnerability map for the Make Hawaiian groundwater resources. A multi-method research design was employed to meet the objectives of the study. The method includes a structured survey method, ocular inspection, and generation of maps using geographical information system. As we are familiar with the survey and ocular inspection methods, let us move on to the generation of maps for drastic model. So for the generation of maps for drastic model, the process is an overlay and index approach in estimating groundwater vulnerability by acquiring and combining maps of the parameters that affects the conveyance of contaminations from the surface to groundwater, then assigning an index value to those parameters based on their relative contribution to groundwater pollution, which then results to the spatially oriented vulnerability index. In this section, findings in each designated drastic rating in relation to drastic parameters for Mekayawan City are presented and discussed as follows. As shown in the figure, following the color dark blue in the legend, the depth to water in the study area has a maximum depth of 304.21 meters and then gradually decreases within boundaries. For the net recharge factor, it can be seen in the figure that following the color blue in the legend, some part of the city is almost highly vulnerable to net recharge with a value of 2.51 meters. These are Barangay Ubihan and Liputan, which are also considered to be the lowland areas of the city. For the aquifer media, as shown in the figure, following the color light yellow in the legend, the aquifer layers within the aquifer region recorded an adobe sandstone constituent. 
for soil media in Meikayawan City, the material is composed of fine sandy loam, silty clay loam, loam, and most areas are clay loam. For topography, it is assigned a rating value of 1, reflecting its low to moderate effect on groundwater vulnerability. As revealed in the figure, the general topography of the land is relatively flat with almost moderately rolling hills. Finally, tracing the gradient red as presented in the legend, the results showed that the groundwater resources of Meikayawan City were found to be high potential vulnerable to contamination, having a vulnerability index of 180 using drastic model. From the findings of the study, it is then concluded that drastic models demonstrate an effective method to develop, improve, and verify groundwater vulnerability maps. The study has also shown the effectiveness of the combined use of the drastic model and GIS in assessing groundwater contamination vulnerability. Moreover, the generated maps could be used as tools for decision-making in groundwater management. Lastly, the study can be used as a scientific basis in the formulation of policies related to groundwater resource management and protection. In order to improve the results, the use of other methods such as GOD and syntax is recommended for comparison and validation on vulnerability index. The use of sensitivity analysis could also determine if the parameters are sensitive. Lastly, additional data could be collected in the field to improve derived results. These are then the references that were cited in this study. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that we all have learned a thing or two about the application of GIS in groundwater vulnerability assessment.